Hello everyone, this is Jim Lucy, Editor-in-Chief for Electrical Wholesaling and Electrical Marketing with the January 24th edition of the Today's Electrical Economy podcast sponsored by Champion Fiberglass. The company began producing epoxy fiberglass conduit and fittings in 1988 and in 1989 developed the first conduit from epoxy resins that had flame resistance and low smoke characteristics. This met the most stringent codes and specification. In today's broadcast, we'll explore the latest electrical price index data and a gr- growing trend in the construction market, the conversion of offices and other commercial properties into apartments. We'll also check out our weekly economic indicators that can offer you an idea where the market may be headed. These five weekly indicators are initial unemployment claims at the state level, rail freight car traffic, the Baker Hughes rig count, oil prices, and copper prices. Our thanks again to Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast for 2022. We had a terrific response to the presentation last year, and we're delighted to be working with Champion Fiberglass to deliver them to you again in this year. Let's first look at the unemployment claims at the state level. This weekly unemployment data is available from the U.S. Department of Labor and the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. For the week ending January the 15th, unemployment claims were down. The U.S. total was down 83,418. New York showed the biggest decline. It was down 14,011. Missouri had another large decline, 7,489 fewer claims than the previous week. Texas was down 6,123. State of Washington showed a decline of 5,925. Michigan was down 5,897. Oregon was down over 4,000 with a number coming in at 4,139 fewer claims. State of Wisconsin down 4,032. State of Indiana down 2,758. And Tennessee down 2,609 claims from the previous week. Only four states registered increases in claims for the weekend January the 15th. Those states were California was up 6,075. Kentucky up 507 claims, Rhode Island up 450 claims, and North Carolina up 55 claims. The biggest thing that I took from these numbers was that about a year ago, you could see many states that were up over 1,000 claims. And here we are for this past week's game, only one state, California, being up over 1,000 claims. That's what you call progress. An interesting leading economic indicator for the overall U.S. economy is freight rail traffic. That's because it's a measure of the amount of raw materials and finished goods that are shipped by rail. You can get this data from the American Association of Railroads, or AAR. It publishes this data weekly at www.aar.org. AAR breaks the freight rail traffic into carloads and intramodal volume. Intramodal volume are those large containers that go on ships, trains, and on trucks. Total carloads for the week ending January the 15th with 233,647 carloads. That's up 0.5% compared with the same week in 2021. U.S. weekly intermodal volume was 259,970 containers and tra- trailers. That was down 12.2% compared to the same week in 2021. When you look at the freight rail categories for the, the most recent data, it, it did run counter to what we've seen over the past few weeks in that many of the sh- c- categories showed declines. In fact, the only only categories that showed increases were coal up 3.9 percent and non-metallic minerals up 3.9 percent. Uh, we saw some pretty large double-digit declines compared to the, this week in uh, January 2021. Petroleum can petroleum products was down over 20 percent. Motor vehicles and parts down 19 percent. Metallic ores and metals also down 11 percent. Grain down 16 percent, and total and total use, as we mentioned previous, down 16.2 percent. If you track the oil market, you're probably familiar with the Baker Hughes rig count. This tracks the oil and gas rigs that are operating it, and this data is available by state, by basin, and nationally at www.rigcount.bakerhughes.com. I always like to show this slide because it gives you an idea of where the largest oil and gas deposits are in the U.S. It gives you a sense of just how many of the large oil plays are in Texas, Oklahoma, and nearby uh, Louisiana in what we call the oil patch, and how big an area the Marcellus gas region covers in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and parts of West Virginia. The Baker Hughes rig count is solidly ahead of last year's pace. It's showing a 60% increase in total rigs over January 2021. The U.S. has 604 rigs now in operation. Texas with 46.4% and New Mexico with 15.7% account for approximately 62% of all operational rigs right now. If you add in Louisiana at 9.3%, 
and Oklahoma at 8.3%, you have almost 80% of all the rigs operating in just those four states. And you can see why they call that area of the country the oil patch. Oil prices began climbing over $80 a barrel on January 12th, and on the morning of January the 24th, were about $85 per barrel, according to the WEX Testix Intermediate Recount on macrotrends.net. Economists like to call copper pricing Dr. Copper because it's a leading economic indicator for future activity. Copper is used in so many industries, with copper is among the leaders in markets because of its use in wire and cable and copper plumbing pipe. Copper prices are right around that $4.50 mark on the morning of January the 24th. You can see over the past six months just how far they have been over the $4 mark. And in fact, since the beginning of August, have been more or less pretty much over the $4.30 mark. Prices for electrical products and other construction materials are still on a tear. We'll be focusing on electrical products, but the numbers are crazy in the residential building market too, with lumber up 38% for the year and up 73% for the past three months, according to CME's Random Links Futures Index. This chart shows the electrical market and electrical price index. This chart is normally only available to paying subscribers for electrical marketing, but with all the changes in the pricing over the past year, I am opening it up to uh, people that are checking out this webcast as well. If you want to get the price index on a regular basis, go to electricalmarketing.com. An annual subscription is only $99. If you take a look at some of the numbers here, you'll see the huge changes both for the month. This is the December data showing uh, the increases there and also for the year. I've highlighted in yellow the products that had the biggest increases over the pay in, in one month. Uh, normally when I've been tracking this over the year, if something's over 1%, it's a pretty big deal. If you look at the chart here, you can see circuit breakers up 6.4% in this December over November and up 10.8% year over year. Panel boards and switches up 3.8%. Residential lighting up 3.2%, industrial controls 3.2% increase for a month, boxes up 2.7% for the month of December, fasteners up 2.2%, fuses up 2%, appliances 1.9%, switch gear 1.7%, metal conduit 1.6% and 1.3% for the month. You look at the changes over a year over year and they're actually pretty astronomical. I've highlighted them in yellow and that's in the last column there. Pole line hardware up an amazing 34.7%. Conduit fittings for the year up 29.9%. Ballast up 35%. Non-metallic conduit 28%. Power and wiring cable, the largest on our chart here, 54% increase year over year. Building wiring cable up 29%. Telephone equipment 22%. And boxes showing another big increase, 43.8%. Just pretty amazing increases, and we're hoping to see them temper sometime this year. I'm doing some research right now on the trend from the conversion of offices and other commercial properties to apartments. Many of us are wondering about the long-term impact on the construction market for the work-from-home movement and the remote office movement, particularly in the office market. We're starting to see some reuse of the existing office space with conversions into apartments. CoStar, which is a real estate Research firm says the office stock that lends itself most to this trend are buildings that have been built since 1980, or at least 100,000 square feet, and are 50% vacant. Yardy Matrix, which also does some research in the real estate firm, posted an interesting chart in an article just uh, last week where they took a look at the what, what the trend is in the reuse of factories, hotels, and office space over the past 10 years. As you can see, the office space, which is uh, outlined in the uh, teal color, in the bar chart here is def definitely leading the increase. Let's look at some of the markets and that have been most, most seeing this trend more than anywhere else. Let's take a look at some of the cities where we're seeing the most uh, conversion into apartments. That's on not only office buildings, but also schools and factories. Philadelphia is leading the pack right now. Over the past two years, Yardy Matrix said that Philadelphia had 1,863 new apartment units from com being converted from offices, from factories and from schools. Washington DC also showing a pretty large increase here, 1,762. Cleveland also showing a pretty big increase, over 1,179. Chicago is up at 1,135 and Los Angeles up at over 1,000. One of the largest office to apartment conversion projects in the United States that recently completed was One Wall Street, which was converted by MacLeod Properties. The total cost of the project was 1.5 billion they took a 90-year-old 654-tall Art Deco skyscraper 
and converted into 566 apartments, a 44,000 square foot Whole Foods market, and a lifetime fitness center. A special thanks again to the folks from Champion Fiberglass for sponsoring the Today's Electrical Economy podcast series for 2022. Please contact me if there's any other type of economic data you would like us to cover in these podcasts. Our next presentation will be on Monday, February the 7th. Until then, stay healthy, be happy. I look forward to talking with you in two weeks.